The cup has dried up for several hours, so now we can remove the tube from it. And at this point, what we want to do is add to the inside reinforcement coils. So you want to add a reinforcement coil to the bottom seam and to the side seam. And because the cup has dried up a little bit, you need to score those two seams as well as you can. score that seam. You might need to add a little bit of moisture to it. Maybe not. It depends upon how wet your cup is. So don't add a lot of moisture because you don't want water sitting in the bottom of your cup. Then take a piece of clay and roll out a reinforcement coil that's about like that big. And what you're going to do is you're going to add it on that side seam and then down in the bottom of the cup. So if you get where the, the body of the cup meets the bottom. So if you can't reach your hand down in there because you've made a cup that's a little bit thin in diameter, what you can do in order to get that coil to stick in there and to smooth it, because we want to later look at the inside of the cup and it should make a nice transition. You shouldn't really be able to see where the seam is down there. So take this wooden tool and as you brace it from the outside with your left hand or with one of your hands, doesn't matter which one, smooth the inside with the wooden knife, this curved edge. So get all of that um, smoothed in and then put a reinforcement quill up on the side where it joined together and smooth that out as well. After you do that, you're ready to add the handle on. And if your cup is leather dry, like this one has stiffened up a bit, you might be able to add the hand on with no incidents. But if it's still kind of soft, what you probably want to do is put a tube back in. It doesn't have to be the same size tube you started with. It's just a tube that you can work against so that the cup has reinforcement as you're putting pressure against it. So it could even be a smaller tube like this that you're just putting next to the part that you're adding the handle. For the handle, I'm going to show you a technique that I'm not sure, did I show you guys that tube handle yet for your um, pinch pot for your pinch pot assignment? So the tube handle is a strap of clay like this. And uh, Chrisabelle stepped on it with her tennis shoe to get this beautiful texture that's on there. And I'm going to stretch it out a little bit just so the texture is even more interesting to me. So it's stretched out a little bit more. And you're going to use this, you're going to um, roll this into a tube as the name implies. So this little edge here and this edge here should be thinner than the, the body of the um, handle. It's actually a miniature version of what you did for your cup where you're going to overlap it. So we want to score the back of one side of it and the front of the other side where they're going to overlap. And then Add a little bit of water and score again so that you have a, a slip build up on the surface of your handle. This is just an example of one type of handle that you all can put on your pots. It doesn't necessarily have to be this one. I'm going to show you in a few minutes other examples of handles that you can do which I covered with the first assignment in the pinch pot. So we're just rolling up this handle. So as the name implies, it's a little tube. And then I'm going to size it up to put it on the side of my pot, on my cup. Put this back in here. And a lot of times the placement of the handle, I like to do it over that placement where I overlap the cup in the first place because that's got double clay usually, so it's a little bit stronger. 